Hi, I am Shannon and welcome to the second part of this series of five daily tips presented for the Cape Town Music Academy. And I make my mother a ponytail at the back of her head. La, ah, 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 I am a creative. Yes, my son is indeed a creative being and uh, the greatest source of inspiration for me actually. Um, in this episode I'm going to talk about uh, the idea of nature and nurture and how environment can shape us as individuals and as creative beings and the importance of environment. Uh, I've always been fascinated with the idea of genetics and um, it's no longer this nature versus nurture idea but the idea of how nature and nurture work in conjunction with each other to affect organisms um, and in particular there's a branch called epigenetics uh, which I'm interested in, which uh, loosely described is, is the fact that n the environment can sometimes turn on genes that were not necessarily in the DNA and not necessarily in the original uh, formation. Uh, they were perhaps hidden. And, and this is very interesting for me because uh, I really believe in this, that uh, an environment can bring out uh, different qualities in uh, people, in us as individuals. There's a fantastic uh, author, he has subsequently died, um, Oliver Sacks, who was a neurosurgeon and wrote many, many case studies about uh, his patients, which were very fascinating, um, the man who mistook his wife for a hat. Um, and one of his uh, books that I really enjoy is one called Musicophilia, and it particularly pertains to music and the brain and how... For instance, straight patients who've never played music suddenly can play the piano and, um, uh, or compose. Uh, Rimsky, I think Rimsky-Korsakov got shrapnel in his brain and he used to put his head to one side and hear melodies and then he wrote them down. The brain is a fantastic and fascinating thing and the, um, I really understand that some people are tapped into other resources, that there are different ways of... Um, <laughs> getting to that uh, creative uh, source. Um, but I, I am a little uh, apprehensive when these terms genius or this person is uh, labeled uh, from a very early age. They have a talent in a certain area and they are labeled genius. Um, and this, I think, is very dangerous because it means that, firstly, that person has this pressure to do something great uh, with what they're doing uh, and there's a pressure on that and it also puts them uh, aside from the rest of the world <laughs> uh, and and that's it then for those who are not labeled geniuses it uh, creates this uh, disparity and and also the fact that perhaps telling these people that they will never be as good for instance yet i believe that in our makeup we have potentials for many things. Um, the, perhaps we may not have the same uh, natural affinity as the person who is labeled a genius, but it means that we can find our own uh, natural geniuses, geniusness. So I'm very, very much uh, believing in this, and I work with this a lot in my um, in my current work uh, with myself and with the musicians I work with. Uh, young musicians especially, about how to find environments that bring out uh, uh, the best or different qualities because learning environments should be exactly that, learning about yourself as well as, yes, you gain information, but it's more important about you in that environment and what that does to you. So if I think about... Um, Myself as a musician, having grown up, I, I, I think a lot of the environments I grew up in with were pretty harsh. A lot of admonishment, a lot of uh, yelling. Uh, you scream at the person until you get better. And, uh, and almost like, uh, you know, you beat it in them that they must get better, uh, as opposed to a building up. The interesting thing also about this uh, label of genius is that those people uh, can do what they want and they're accepted. Um, so this is the danger that maybe what they do is incredible, but maybe what they do is not so incredible and it's uh, just accepted because they're a genius. So then also the idea that um, the environment we put ourselves in as creative beings affects us. And I think uh, sometimes there's not much choice. Sometimes there's gigs you have to do with people you maybe don't want to play with or you don't feel comfortable with. 
But I think uh, where you can, it's important to be conscious of the environment around you. So what that means is also to be conscious of how do I feel right now? Do I feel free or do I feel inhibited? Do I feel I'm able to express myself in my best possible way or be my best self? Or is there something here that's not feeling good? Now, also to do with uh, living in Norway, part of the, the whole culture is that there's not a lot of hierarchy uh, here um, in the schools. Uh, there's no ma'am or sir. It's um, you call by your first name. And it's about, um, I know certainly the idea is that everybody's equal. No person should be uh, greater than another. If we take that concept into the music uh, arena uh, and we drop again, drop our opinions of others, we stand a fair chance of making better music than, for instance, one person dictating their musicianship on another, or one person deciding where the path of music should go. Yes, there should be leaders. Yes, there should be people who, who naturally take things. But if it's at the expense of another person's creativity, I think that needs to be revised. So I also learned a lesson when a friend of mine, a great musician, came from um, the side and came to South Africa. And the, she was in the middle of a solo and the drummer was playing really loudly. And she turned around and literally went like to, for him to play softer. And immediately he played softer. And uh, I mean, I guess I thought that wasn't possible. But are we able to say uh, without critical, without being critical, uh, to have a dialogue about right now I don't feel that what you're doing is making me feel good. I've been on stage with musicians where I've had to stop playing. There was no space. Uh, I really get frustrated, for instance, when the rhythm section decide where they want to take my solo and I didn't necessarily want to go there. They, instead of the listening, following, they dictated. And, and that's hard uh, when you're in the moment. Uh, but perhaps the discussion can come afterwards without any kind of criticism but to say I feel when you are playing in this manner I am unable to to be my best self how do we solve this can we have that dialogue with our musicians uh, that we're playing with uh, are we able to say to a, a band leader for instance the way you're speaking to me right now um, I don't feel um, I'm able to be my best musical self I have been in that position before and I never worked with that band leader again where he yelled at me uh, in the middle of a performance. Uh, and sometimes we have to make those choices. Uh, it's hard. We need to make money and there's not so much many options around. Uh, but I think it's important for us each to take care of the musical environment we put ourselves in and, and create this uh, dialogue uh, amongst each other that is not admonishing, that's saying can we try a different way here? And to be conscious of, okay, what is happening right now? Is this working? Is the music good? Because ultimately, when everybody's feeling good and playing at their best, the music will be better. And again, there are musicians, I've seen uh, musicians on, uh, fighting on stage with each other, and everyone goes, yes, but the tension is great. It's not my choice to subscribe to that way of being or playing. I don't like this bullying, this musical bullying on stage. It's my choice. So again, my choice to live in Norway was because I also wanted a different life. So Louis Armstrong says what we play is life. So if my environment, the hostility, for instance, in the culture, uh, I found it very hard being a woman with the statistics of crime uh, so high. I found that hard. I was afraid. And I felt that fear when I played as well. That was part of why I left. And it's no admonishment towards the musicians I played with, but I had a fear. So I had to change my environment. I had to change my living environment to find another environment to, to be my creative self. And this is part of the choices we make. It's not saying that's terrible. Again, it's saying, I made the choice that I, I don't feel I can be like that anymore. Maybe when I was younger, when I felt I had to fight and prove myself, maybe that was the, the choice I made then. Uh, but as a, as a person, I wanted a different lifestyle. And I think that lifestyle affected 
my creative lifestyle. So that is, for me, the thing about environment is, firstly, questioning, uh, am I putting myself in good environments? Am I creating a good environment? Am I nurturing a good environment with those I play with and, and for those I'm working with on an education level? And are we creating a, a good discourse about how we, how we want the environment to be? And can we discuss this? Are we open to not take it personally, but, but discuss that maybe one person doesn't make the other person feel comfortable? Or that it doesn't work musically? Some musicians just don't gel well together. So these are all kinds of questions I certainly ask myself when I put myself into a musical environment. And the bottom line is, it is a choice. Do I want to play in this musical environment? Shannon Mulder.